you'll probably find as you talk with different members of the Star Citizen community, members of your org, different people on Reddit, the forums, whatever, you'll find people who will say, you know, well, I'm just not playing Star Citizen right now because it's not finished. And to a certain degree, I do sympathize with those folks. It's like, it's, a, it's not a finished game. There's all kinds of bugs. You don't know what's going on. I mean, I'll just wait until it gets into a much more stable state. And I do sympathize with that point of view. I, I really honestly do sympathize with that point of view. I mean, I don't play the game just to get background footage. So, I mean, that is a handy, uh, you know, two birds with one stone situation there. But I do play the game to certainly get current and or at least keep fairly current. But I mean, even when you look at something like space combat, I still feel that the flight model is is do is do is going to have you know a reckoning at some point in the future i think that we are going to see a shift a big shift in uh the way the flight model works you know we've experimented with um different modes of control of ships we've had stronger main thrusters which is kind of what we got right now weaker secondary thrusters the ones that control your you know, your ship's direction and how you move and how you can recover from a turn and all of that. We've had medium and medium, and we've had, you know, just strong everything. Strong main thrusters, strong uh, secondary thrusters. And none of which has really provided a satisfactory result. And so I think that in the end, I think CIG is going to kind of flip things on their head and do something, you know, drastically different. At least that would be my expectation who knows what they're gonna do but is there any point to really playing the game under such circumstances you know you can be involved in just a basic combat scenario with an npc and you could be shooting and shooting and shooting and you think you're hitting it and you're you know you're right on the pipper and you're not getting anything and other times as i've just shown there are times when you're shooting away from what you think you should be hitting or you think oh maybe i'm gonna hit but all your shots are landing and you're not exactly sure why is that a bug is that the server is it is it the client is there a communication error i don't know this, there's a lot of circumstances like this the fact that you can get your assets just erased because oops error 30,000 you're disconnected blah 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 reason why not so sure but it happened so you lost all these things they can be really frustrating is there a point to logging into the game and I would argue that there is along the way when you're playing the game I I have kind of strategized i've kind of shaped my gameplay around the idea of i only do things that really that don't represent asset loss or the the risk of asset loss i don't like to run cargo because to run cargo you have to buy that cargo first and then trade it to another location and if you buy cargo and then your ship gets dis disconnected you lose blah 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 whatever then all that money that you spent on that cargo is gone. So I like to go out and take mercenary missions and things like that. That's generally where I go to get credits from. So I, I've kind of shaped my gameplay around minimizing the risk and just looking for the rewards. But I do it because I like to keep fairly current. I like to know what's going on in the game, where certain things can be found. Where do I have to go to get this gun? Where do I have to go to get that gun? I like to explore different things so that when we get to a point, when we get to a point where things count, I will have, you know, all the stuff that has been since swept aside or broken or removed doesn't count. All the things that stay, all the things that remain fairly current, um, I'm going to know where those things are. And I think that that's kind of, that's going to end up being kind of an intangible advantage in the early days of the game when things count. I don't think that you should play eight hours a day. I, I don't think that that's, uh, that's healthy. <laughs> but I think that knowing where things are, exploring the game, seeing how different systems work, especially when they first come online, experimenting with them, having that kind of 
foundation of knowledge to kind of work with in the beginning is something that is very, very valuable indeed. I mean, it's true of so many video games, you know, you get into a new expansion, you get into a new level, a new world. If you've messed with it in the PTR, you already kind of know where to go. You know how to get this, that, the other thing, all the things that you need to get in order to get to where you want to go faster. Things like combat, you might say, well, if the flight end, you know, if the flight model is going to change in a major way, why bother getting used to combat now? Well, I think that there are things that come with combat. There are things that come packaged along with it that you may not think of, but how to group and ungroup weapons, where, what weapons tend to work, what weapons tend not to work, you know, what weapons tend to yield the best result. Maybe a certain weapon, a certain auto cannon or, you know, particle weapon may be good now and may be shitty later. But maybe understanding the types of weapons that you do better with. Is it auto cannons or is it single, you know, single shot type high alpha, low rate of fire weapons? Is that what works out best for you? You know, experimenting with those things and finding the things that you like because there's going to be a variety of weapons in each category. Some will be good, some will be bad. And so being, you know, being experienced in using those weapons and knowing which ones you prefer would probably be a good idea knowing where you can buy them how you know where you should place them on your ship experimenting with different things like this you know even just being something of a light touch gamer and just coming in every couple of weeks and putting an hour or two in just to kind of explore and just have fun there are all these little pieces of knowledge that you pick up along the way that you may not be entirely aware of the fact that you're picking these things up, but as you do, as you experience these things, that's a lot of time that once things count, you're not going to be wasting, you know, trying to figure these things out later down the road while everybody else has kind of got it figured out and is kind of, you know, leapfrogging ahead of you while you're sitting there trying to wrestle with, how do I assign weapons to groups again? Where do I look for this key bind in the user interface? You know, where do I find those settings? It's the little, all the little details that you pick up along the way that can save you a lot of time in the future. To give you a, a quick kind of personal example of this is, you know, th with this ship here, the Vanguard, um, a few months ago, I was looking to get the, uh, the big bearing size five laser cannon. To put on this ship that's back when the Vanguard only had that strict set of weapons that it came with and the big bearing auto cannon basically had the same projectile velocity so all your shots would fall into the same place so I wanted to do kind of like a monoboat type thing with the Vanguard and I wanted to get this big size 5 gun and they sell it on our corp at center mass and so i went okay well i'll just go to our corp and buy it there so i went to our corp and without thinking i just went to the r corp weapon shop right down on area 18 and looked through the panels so they don't sell it here where is it so i went oh, okay so i went to dumpers depot i figured oh it's got to be there but it wasn't there and so it says it sells it here on our corp, but where? I don't see it. What I hadn't realized is that if you go into the R Corp office tower and you go to the elevator banks on the far side, there are additional shops there that you can travel up to, and one of them is the center mass weapon shop where I was able to purchase that auto cannon. And that I spent maybe an hour running around R Corp going, where is this shop? I don't see this shop, you know? And then finally, oh, you know, there it is. It's the little things like that that you pick up along the way that can pay dividends down the road, especially saving time in the future, knowing where, thing, knowing where things are, knowing how to find things. You don't want to be the guy on Discord who's always like, where is that? What is that? Where do I find that? Where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? Just kind of even touching on the game here and there and just playing it just a little bit, it can give you so many of these little experiences all these these little tidbits of knowledge 
that are going to make things so much easier down the road once we get to a point where credits count and where we can actually start moving forward with our characters rather than waiting for CIG to go, well, that was an exploit, better wipe everybody's money, they're making too much money, that sort of thing, because we know 100% that that is going to happen and probably going to happen multiple times before we get to a point where, you know, things are permanent. And so it's a good idea to kind of just even for a, you know, like an hour a week or an hour every two weeks, it doesn't matter. Just get into the game, log in and mess around with stuff, especially like if you're thinking about discussions where people are talking about balancing of different ships or, you know, the way ships are laid out or the way the weapons work on a ship, it's it's always better to have an informed opinion to say, I have flown on this thing and these have been my experiences. I have used these weapons and these have been my experiences. It can, it, it better informs the conversation and it also better informs you as a player because when you play around with these different things and you try these different things, maybe even, even if you don't plan to use them, that kind of experience if you end up having to deal with or fight another player who is using those things you might have a little practical experience as to what the limitations of those weapons are and how to exploit those limitations so there is value to playing on the persistent universe right now as buggy and as broken as it can be at times there is a value to logging in and playing the game from time to time and just trying to figure certain things out. There's a lot of things that are going to change between now and release day. But there's a lot of things that you're going to pick up along the way as well. That will help kind of, you know, save your sanity. And, you know, preserve your patience in those difficult first days of actually trying to do something with your character in the Persistent Universe. Anyways, that's the show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.